Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, please pray for me, people. I need all the prayers I can get. Trying to decide what to do, where the Lord wants me to do, where to send me, what to, I don't know. But uh, I want to open up with a prayer, but not my prayer. There was a guy named Pastor. His name was Joe Wright. Perhaps you've heard this. It was on uh, Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. The Kansas Senate, state of Kansas, their Senate, uh, asked him to open up some sessions. And they asked him to do a prayer. <laughs> Boy, did they get more than they bargained for. So let's hear the prayer. And I quote, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, Woe unto those who call evil good. But that is exactly what we have done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our values. We confess we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it pluralism. We have worshipped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and called it alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. Eh, not so sure I disagree with him on that. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide and bless these men and women who have been sent to direct us to the center of your will. I ask in the name of your Son, the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen to that, I say. Unquote. And, of course, a bunch of legislatures got up and walked out in protest. Um, I wonder what they're going to say to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings in that day. Boy, what a prayer, huh, people? I mean, I, I, I couldn't improve on that. No, no way. Today's Bible study is going to be on why the church is dying. Now, those of you that have listened to me ranting and raving for the last, you know, five, six, seven years, none of this is going to be new. But let's take a look. Now, there was a guy named John. Not John the Baptist, but uh, John the brother of James. He had a father named Joseph and a mother named Mary. So guess who his? Uh, guess who he grew up with in the family? Yeah, some guy named Jesus. So I bet you he knows a couple of things. What do you think? But in First John chapter two, and verse eighteen, we read. Little children, it is the last time. 
And as ye have heard that Antichrist, singular, shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. Sounds like Judas Iscariot, right? But we have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Verse 22. You want to know the definition of an Antichrist? Here you go. Who is a liar? Question. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Isn't it funny? John Hagee says that there's a certain group of people that deny Jesus, but they have the Father, he says. Well, Either he doesn't know the Bible as well as I do, or he's a liar. Because if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. And, of course, he says that this certain group of people who, by Bible definition, are antichrists, and if you don't know who they are, May I suggest you call your local sin of Gog and ask the rab by um, if Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. If he says yes, well, then they're Christians. And if he says no, well, then you know Antichrist. What can I tell you? But uh, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. Jesus said, well, let's see, John 14 and verse 16. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But John Hagee says a certain group in the Middle East that deny Christ have this back door. Uh, I don't think so. But guess what? There is a, an entire group of churches, and I mean the majority of them, and they bless these people that are antichrists, they ask the Lord to bless these people who curse Jesus. Uh, how would you feel if you were a father and you had a son that was, you know, good, and then there was people that hated your son and then your neighbors come over and say oh please help these people that are cursing your son I mean really really yeah I mean let's face it Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh and if you don't know that read first Timothy 316 on your own I mean the Bible tells you Emmanuel 
Isaiah 7.14. Matthew, uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 1. I mean, thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, for he shall save his uh, people from their sins. Uh, Matthew 1.23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now the you-know-whos love to tell you, oh, Matthew was written in Hebrew and then translated into Greek. Well, if that was true, why would they tell you Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us? Because if it was in Hebrew, Emmanuel means God with us. It wouldn't need to say which being interpreted is. I mean, it would just say Emmanuel. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. And that would be it, because if you knew Hebrew, you would know that means God with us. No, but it was written in Greek. So when they gave you the Hebrew name Emmanuel, they had to tell you which being interpreted is God with us. And I almost fell for that Matthew was written in Hebrew garbage, but I don't believe it anymore. No. Because Greek was the common language. There's a certain group in the Middle East that says the most anti-Semitic country in the world is Greece. And guess what? You ever heard of the Greek Orthodox Church? They were the most persecuted church in the history of the world. They evangelized Eastern Europe. You ever heard of the Russian Orthodox Church? Yeah. Well, Eastern Europe. They evangelized Eastern Europe, and they preserved the New Testament in Greek for us. The King James Bible comes from this majority text from the Greek church. Yeah. And the EU hates Greece. They're doing everything in their power to impoverish those poor people. And guess what? It's coming to America, this problems. So, how did the Antichrist become God's chosen people? Very interesting story. Oh, let me guess. Uh, the churches incorporated and became businesses under 501c3. And they took out mortgages from the banks. And let me guess who owns the banks. And uh, the Bible says that the servant is, uh, the borrower is borrower or servant to the lender. Some Bible versions say the slave to the lender. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. In Proverbs 8 and verse 36, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All they that hate me love death. What did King David say about those that hated the Lord? Psalms 139, verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Huh. But Jesus said we're supposed to love our enemies. That's right. We're supposed to love our enemies. Are we supposed to love the enemies of the Lord? Are we supposed to love Satan? You know, I got banned from the King James Bible online discussion group for asking somebody if they love Satan because he said we're supposed to love everybody. And I asked, he even said, well, yeah, even Satan, we're supposed to love him. I says, I asked him point blank, do you love Satan? Next thing you know, I'm banned. Wow, 
I wonder if they got Satanists in that place. I mean, it's really disgusting. You know, here it is, it's supposed to be a Christian group, and you got people saying that we're supposed to love Satan, and then they ban the guy that, uh, you know, whatever. I don't love Satan. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> and I don't love Satanists either. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And, I'm, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Ah. Now, in 2 Chronicles verse 19 and verse 1 there was a good king of Judah named Jehoshaphat and he was asked by a wicked king of Israel named Ahab you ever heard of Ahab and Jezebel yeah I will guarantee you they're not going to be in the kingdom I'm 99.99999% sure that neither one of them is going to be in the kingdom. Did I say that enough? 0.9999999% sure. Yeah. So this wicked king Ahab that did a lot of things that make the Lord angry, well, he asked good king Jehoshaphat to help him in a battle against somebody that the Lord had sent to uh, fight against this guy. And the good king says, sure, I'll help you. No problem. Hey, you're, you know, you're Israel. I'm Israel. You're my people are my people. Well, 2 Chronicles 19, verse 1. Now, Jehoshaphat's the good king. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, now, seer is just an old Bible way of saying a prophet. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. So here it is, you got this prophet going out to see the good king. And said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Really? Should you help the ungodly? And love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Wow. Maybe we shouldn't be blessing the Antichrist. What do you think? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Um, when he took the groves out of the land, he's talking about he wiped out, he was wiping out the Satanists because that's where they worshipped in the groves. See, they do their little midnight things under the full moon out in the woods because when they do child sacrifice, they don't want to do it in the middle of the city because they don't want problems with righteous indignation. I mean, I tell you what, if I was uh, saw some people sacrificing children on an altar to Satan, uh, I might grab my shotgun and uh, do something. But, hey, that's just me. So, And then there's another thing. People say, oh, well, God loves everybody. Anybody can be saved. You ever heard that lie? Take a look at Malachi chapter 1, where it says that God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. Are you going to tell me that somebody that God hates is going to be in his kingdom because he believes in God? Read James chapter 2. It says that, Believest thou in one God? 
thou doest well. Even the devils believe and tremble. There's people who tell you that even Satan's going to be saved because Satan believes in God. He's going to be saved. Uh, I don't think so. My Bible tells me that the devil, the false prophet, and the beast are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is the garbage. If, if people would read their Bibles, preachers couldn't get away with this garbage. I mean, the churches would rise up and revolt and tar and feather these people and run them out of town on a rail and find another pastor that would preach the words of God. I'm not even worthy to be a pastor. I'm not. I do not meet um, Paul's biblical qualifications for being a pastor. I don't. I'm just a Bible teacher. That's all I am. I don't think I'd want to be a pastor. Not in today's churches. I mean, not that I'm worthy. I'm not. But it's just, it's disgusting to me. It's disgusting. And then they say, you know, I, I, I post, ask people, does God love everybody? You know that 99% of them get it wrong? And they'll go, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. Don't you know, Bob? God changed his mind when he came, became Jesus and hung on that cross. Now he loves everybody. Uh, I don't think so. And then there's another thing. Would God deceive people? Well, would God deceive people? Would God deceive people that hate the Lord? Uh, well, let's take a look. What does the Bible say? Well, if you want to know God's character, and if you want to know if he would deceive somebody, now a lot of these topics I'm talking about, I've got detailed Bible studies. I mean, I've got well over a thousand Bible studies on the YouTube channel, at least uh, today is July 3rd, 2020. Um, I, as of right now, as far as I know, my YouTube channel is still up. I'm also on BitChute, and I've got some Bible studies on uh, Bright Eon, but I can't, they booted me off which is just as well. Mike Adams is a gatekeeper, just like Alex Jones. Uh, they, Bright Eon, booted 242 of my videos off line. I mean, you know, here it is. Oh, we're all for free speech. We don't censor, do censorship. Next thing you know, 242 of my videos. Poof, gone. Oh, you didn't get enough views. What are you talking about? I got over 20-something thousand views on my on that channel. You're going to tell me they don't have enough views? And then they won't let me load anymore. Whatever, dude. So, all right. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Now, I was thinking about doing a Bible commentary on Ezekiel, but... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time. The way things are going right now, boy, i tell you what. I did Isaiah. Isaiah is quite a book. All right. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. What's iniquity? Sin. So they got idols and sin in their lives and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all, uh, at all by them? 
In other words, these wicked people are coming here and they're going to and they're going to talk to me. That's that's the Bob translation. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Oh, yeah. You know what, people? Let me tell you something. There are churches in San Fag Sicko, I mean San Francisco, that are absolutely positive that they're saved. After all, God made them gay. God made them that way. They'll tell you that. Yeah, God made them gay, and they're in a committed relationship, and they're saved. And you can't convince them otherwise. And they even got a Bible that, you know, uh, changes the word sodomy to something different. Like uh, the NIV said, uh, a shrine prostitute. What is a shrine prostitute? Oh, that's a prostitute that does it at the shrine. Is it okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the shrine? Or is it okay to do it at the shrine as long as you don't charge money for it? Huh. See, it took sodomite and changed it to shrine prostitute. And that's the NIV Bible, which uh, the exclusive publisher of the NIV Bible is Zondervan, which is the largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking world. They are owned by a company called Harper Collins. And they print a book called The Joy of Gay Sex. Gee, is that a coincidence or what? Hmm. Yeah, it's a how to manual. I've never read it, but I've seen it in their bookstore and online. You could buy it from Amazon. And Harper Collins also sells the satanic bible by the church of satan isn't it funny the largest printer of bibles in the english-speaking world is owned by the company that prints the satanic bible by anton levy i mean levey well i was right the first time he changed his name they'll try to tell you his real name was howard stanton but that's a lie um the founder of the church of satan uh played the devil in the movie Rosemary's Baby. So, basically, the largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking world prints the Satanic Bible. And what other filth do they sell under their so-called Christian umbrella? Well, HarperCollins' parent company is called the News Corporation. One of their other parent, uh, one of their other companies is called Fox News. Yes, the Fox Network. Rupert Murdoch. Um, somebody told Jesus that Herod was going to kill him, and he says, "Tell that fox Herod." Well, you could say, "Tell that fox Rupert Murdoch." Yeah. So. What about those Bible commentaries that Zondervan prints? Hmm, I wonder if they would sneak any devilish stuff, you know, the company that that prints the Satanic Bible and Joy of Gay Sex. I wonder if they would print any devil stuff pretending to be Christians. Hmm, I wonder. Let's go back to Ezekiel 14, verse 3. Verse 4, Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Yeah, 
Is your idol in your heart sodomy? Well, the Lord's going to deceive you and let you think you're saved. You know? If, if your idol is money, cheat those widows and orphans out of their life savings. And, uh, you know, throw a couple bucks in your Masonic Lodge church. And let them tell you, oh, or say some Hail Marys, and do the rosary, and let the, and let the priest or the pastor tell you, God bless you, brother. And then go live like the devil Monday through Saturday and see if the Lord doesn't deceive you. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You know what it means to be estranged? When a husband and wife are estranged, they separate. They get divorced. These people are estranged from God because of the idols in their lives. Whether that idol be sex, money, whatever. Verse 6, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, repent, repent of what? Of your wickedness. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Listen carefully. And if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken a thing, I the Lord, I the Lord have deceived that prophet. What? And if the Lord be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. You know what? When you want to live in wickedness and sin, God will deceive you. Yes. Almost everybody gets this wrong when I ask them, would, would the Lord deceive somebody? And the answer is yes. But you know what? When you want the Lord more than anything else in this world, more than your sin, you'll find him. But when you want your sin more than anything else in the world, the Lord will deceive you. There's not going to be people sitting on a fence and God shaking one side and the devil shaking the other side and see which way you fall. That, it don't work like that, people. You're either on the right side or you're on the left side. God puts the sheep on the right and he puts the goats on the left. You ever notice the socialists and the communists and the liberals always call themselves the left? They know what they are. They know what they are. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet... And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him, destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Wow. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I 
may be their God, saith the Lord God. You know what, people? All these pre-tribbers, there's three things that always goes with these pre-trib rapture people. One, they always bless the Antichrist. You know, they, they call the Antichrist God's chosen people. Now, how in the world are the Antichrist God's chosen people? Oh, wait, they are God's chosen people. But for the lake of fire, not, not for the kingdom of heaven. No, they're the tares. They get gathered to be bundled to be burned. So you got the pre-trib rapture. Well, they always they always bless the Antichrist. And then they they they're what they call dispensational. And what they'll tell you is the Bible's chopped up into at least seven dispensations. And they'll tell you that means a period of time. But the key the the root word for dispensation is the word dispense. Have you ever heard of a dispenser? What does a soap dispenser do? It gives you soap. It doesn't have anything to do with a period of time. Nothing. Nothing. And what they'll do is when you read a plain verse that even a, an elementary school kid could understand, and they'll say, oh, well, that's a different dispensation. That was a different period of time. It doesn't apply to us. Really? Okay. See, they'll explain away everything that you show them in the Bible. They got an excuse for everything. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, the Bible tells you to, to do the Lord's Supper and the Passover. And they'll say, oh, well, no, that's different dispensation. That's for the you-know-whos. That's not for us. So the things that the Bible tells you to do, they won't do. And then the things the Bible says not to do, they'll do. Like Jeremiah 10. Read Jeremiah 10 next December. When you get ready to decorate that tree. Read Jeremiah 10. The book of Ezekiel tells you about women weeping for Tammuz. And the sun coming up and the people worshiping the sun. Well, guess what Tammuz is associated with? Ishtar. In the West, we call her by many different names. Uh, the current English is Easter. Easter is not an event. Easter is a name of a goddess, a fertility. Uh, bunny rabbits? What does Playboy rabbits, I mean bunny rabbits, have to do with Easter? What has that got to do with Jesus? And, and eggs. When did the resurrection of Christ become an Easter egg hunt? I mean, and Playboy bunnies. I mean, uh, um, Easter bunnies. What is it? <laughs> really? The resurrection of Christ, they turned it into an Easter egg hunt. There was a church in Joplin, Missouri. Had a woman pastor, probably read an NIV Bible, and they had a tornado smack it on Easter Sunday during the services. People died. And it shook up people's faith. Why would God let this happen? You don't know? Really? You don't know why? Are you idiots? Why don't you read your Bible instead of going listening to a woman pastor reading from an NIV Bible? Who she's probably a lesbian anyways. And you can't figure out why? Really? So you got uh, dispensations. Zionism, where they bless the Antichrist. And then the pre-trib rapture. And you know what, people? Wait until they find out that the pre-trib rapture is a lie. 
a false prophecy. It hasn't happened yet, so I can't call them false prophets. But once, once it fails to happen, then they become false prophets. You know what the Bible says about false prophets? Well, in the Old Testament, it said that when a false prophet, when their prophecy failed to happen, you were supposed to stone them. You were supposed to kill them. God commanded that. It wasn't a suggestion. You don't believe me? Well, read Deuteronomy chapter 13. And, I, you know, you can read it by yourself. But it tells you what to do with a false prophet that wants to turn you away from the Lord. But we can read it, Deuteronomy 18, verse 20, real quick. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So every pre-trib teacher that teaches that is 100% fact, and when it doesn't happen, they're false prophets. And the Lord is going to deal harshly with them. Matter of fact, I don't even think they're going to be in the kingdom. I really don't. I think the Lord's deceived them. And I think he's deceived the flock too because these people bless those that curse his only begotten son. And if you don't have the son, you don't have the father either. These people are going to be our enemies of the remnant church. Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 10, it says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Do you know what a delusion is? It means you believe something that's not true. And God is sending them to believe something that's not true. God is, not the devil, the Lord. The Lord is deceiving these people. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's some strong words, people. And then the churches hide the truth of the Bible. And they'll tell you these Gentiles are just, you know, oh, well, we're not Israel. We couldn't possibly be Israel. Why the Antichrist? Now, they're Israel. Really? The Antichrists are God's chosen people and they're Israel? And then they'll argue and fight about, you know, oh, well, you know, we believe in the elect. We believe in elect. You know, God has a chosen people, the elect. And those are the Antichrist. But uh, everybody else, it's whosoever will. Really? How come, how, come, how come Christians can't be God's elect, his chosen people? Why not? Why not? I, I you know, that's what I believe. But to the churches, oh, that's a heresy. But believing the Antichrist that hate Jesus, now, oh yeah, well, that's Bible truth. Those are God's true chosen people. Well, yeah, they are chosen, but like I said, for what? They're, they're chosen to be the tares that are going to be bundled 
and burned. And you know what, people? It won't be long, in my opinion, before the, the wicked people are going to force the righteous out of the cities and they're going to be wandering destitute. But we're going to go back to that. Why is the church dying? Well, another thing is we don't follow God's moral laws. And, you know, basically, God gave us the two commandments, and I've, I've beat this to death. Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And on these two hang all the law and the prophets. And I'm paraphrasing. But we're not supposed to love God's enemies. If you're living next door to a bunch of Satanists and cannibals, like I say, I suggest you move. Or get rid of them and get some real godly neighbors, you know. Um, but uh, when I say the laws, God had a set of governmental laws. For example, he gave you what to do with Satanists. He told you what to do with Sodomites. He told you what to do with witches. And if somebody had an animal that killed somebody else's animal, well, you were supposed to restore them, the animal. And if that animal got loose and hurt somebody the first time, well, they had to take care of those people until they recovered. And if that animal did it a second time, knowing that it was a dangerous animal like a pit bull, well, they were supposed to kill the animal and the owner. Let me tell you something. If a pit bull attacked a child and injured it, and they knew the next time that it happened that their life was forfeited, uh, they would be very, very cautious. Uh, I tell you what, there's a lot of people who would probably get rid of that animal. That's, you know... That's just one thing, part of God's law. Um, you know, kidnappers were supposed to be put to death. And uh, murderers were supposed to be put to death. And if it was an accident, well, an accident's an accident. But when somebody was lying in wait, and we don't follow that anymore. You know, now it's like, well, you know, he's not guilty by reason of insanity. Oh, yeah, he was possessed of a devil. So we're going to put him in a mental institution with the rest of the devils and give him a bunch of drugs, and then the devil can act normal, and then we can release him, and then he can go out and worship Satan and murder, kidnap and murder children. I mean, really. So do you want um, do you want to follow man's laws? Or do you want to follow God's laws? And let me tell you something, people, all these pre-tribbers, they're going to have to make a choice. They're either going to have to deny the Lord to save their lives under the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E look it up. The penalty for violating the Noahide laws is death, method of execution, beheading. Hmm, where have I read that before? Oh, that's right, Revelation. Uh, and the number rule number one is no idols. Well, guess what? According to the people that came up with the Noahide laws, every Christian is guilty of an idol called Jesus. So, you have a choice. Deny Jesus and save your life, or acknowledge Jesus and get your head cut off if they catch you. Or you can flee into the wilderness, which is going to happen to the remnant church one day. 
Uh, and I'll guarantee you that probably 85 to 90 percent of the people in the smaller churches, not the big ones, my opinion, are going to end up denying Christ to save their sorry hides. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 33, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And you know what, people? That's the thing. Matthew 24 tells you how bad things are going to be. And what will a pre-tribber do? Well, they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, that's for those other people. That's not for us. That's a different dispensation. A period of time? That was a different time period? Really? No. No. God has deceived these people because they bless those that hate his son. And you know what? They're going to end up they're probably going to end up turning people like us in for food. Because you know what? None of them heeded the words of Jesus. When Jesus warned his people what was going to happen in the latter days, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and I think Luke 21, I'm not sure. You know, he warned his people what would happen. The book of Revelation warns his people what's going to happen. And persecution, famines. And what did Joseph do? Joseph prepared. None of these pre-tribbers are preparing. You know why? Oh, well, we're not going to be here. Well, guess what? When their belly's empty and they haven't eaten in a week, you think uh, you think if the uh, the government offers them a, a plate of food to turn you in, you think they'll do it? I know they will. I know they will. These people are probably, most of them are probably enemies of Christ. I don't know. Maybe I'm bearing false witness. Maybe I'm being too harsh. But I tell you what, when I've brought up stuff like this in Bible studies, I've been told to leave. It's funny. I get invited to go to a church Bible study, and then I point out scriptures, and then I get told to leave. One place said, you better get out of here because you're trespassing, and we're going to call the police. And I'm not confrontational. I'm just reading Bible stuff. This is what my Bible says. It says God hated Esau. I mean, you know. Oh, well, that's a different dispensation. God loves everybody now. Okay, if you say so, I guess your God loves Esau. Esau was of the devil, so your God must be the devil. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I don't say that stuff, but uh, well, what can I tell you? What do you want to bet all these pre-tribbers, well, most, uh, most of them, I should say, will end up denying Jesus as a false prophet because the you-know-whos are going to say, well, see, see, we've been telling you for almost 2,000 years that Jesus was a false prophet. And he told you that there was, you, you weren't going to be here for any trouble. And he lied. So here's our Messiah. Worship him. Yeah, their Messiah is going to be the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, the dragon. And they worshiped the dragon. And people, let me tell you something. Matthew, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 12. Just remember something. The woman is the remnant church. The woman is the remnant church. Read Revelation 12.
12. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. This is a really important chapter. We're not going to read the whole thing. We'll start uh, Hebrews 11, verse 24. Think about this for the future. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. How many Christians today fear, fear the government more than they fear the Lord? Virtually all of them. And I'm a hypocrite sometimes, you know, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith the wall of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say, uh, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And no, they weren't coming down from UFOs, not those kinds of aliens. The kind that crossed the uh, southern border of Texas and Arizona and California, those are the kind of aliens. Verse 35, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Do you know that there's a, a resurrection? And then there's a better resurrection? Huh. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. According to legend, Isaiah was cut in half. They put him inside of a log, a hollow log, and sawed him in two. Oh boy. How many of us would want to do that? They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. You know what? destitute means it means having nothing it means being totally dependent upon the lord and the lord alone being destitute afflicted tormented of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, there you go, people. All 
blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to His name and His name alone. And that name is Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen.